Okay, chapter nine is called Frightful Finds Sam. In early March, the first of the migrating falcons and hawks returned to the Catskill Mountains. Frightful was in her nuptial plumage. She had molted completely. The scarred and broken feathers were gone. The white on her tail and under her chin was as bright as new snow. Her back was thunderhead blue. Her rose-tinted breast had the brightness of cloud tops. Her head was almost black. She was healthy and educated in rats and pigeons. She knew the pigeons and their flight patterns especially well. Her muse faced the coat and she watched the bird long hours. She saw how they dodged John's young falcons with twists and turns. She saw them return home to the coat on smooth, slow glides. John noted Frightful's interest in the pigeons and rats and on a bright but chilly morning, he carried her to the top of his mountain. Susan hurried behind him, jumping patches of soggy snow. Frightful cocked her head as John took off her jessies. She stood free, but did not fly. Drawing herself up tall, she mapped the direction to the one mountain among thousands, the one tree among millions. No spring force pulled her north with the returning falcons. She was home and not far from Sam. John touched her beak with his finger. Susan hugged her arms to her body and watched wistfully. She loved and hated the moment when they set the birds free. Goodbye, John said, and cast her from his hand with a strong thrust of his arm. Frightful bulleted into the sky and opened her wings. Susan called, I'll miss you, Destiny. She moved closer to John. Oh, why do I get so involved with these birds? She asked. It's so hard to tell them goodbye. John nodded and concentrated on the disappearing speck. I wonder why she's going toward Delhi, he finally said. That's the last place in the world for a peregrine falcon to nest. No cliffs over there. Frightful knew exactly where she was going. She sped into the wind and covered the 30 miles to the one mountain among thousands in less than 10 minutes. She dropped down onto the one hemlock among millions and came to rest. Cree, 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 kareet, she called. There was silence then. Frightful! Sam put down the plumping mule crossbar he was repairing and jumped to the rock by Baron Weasel's home. Frightful peered at him through lacy hemlock limbs. Frightful! She dropped down three limbs. Frightful. Sam's voice lowered to a whisper. You came back. She hopped down to the next limb and looked for her perch. It was not there, but the plumping mill crossbar was. Frightful alighted on it. Cree, 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 carite. She was home. Sam leaped from the rock and walked slowly toward her. His blue eyes looked into hers. His suntanned face creased with his big smile of wonder. Now what do I do with you, beautiful bird? He asked. I can't keep you. The feds say I'm not old enough to have a falconer's license. Frightful tipped her head and focused an eye on Sam. If I keep you, the Fish and Wildlife Service will just take you away from me. Maybe even jail me. You're an endangered species. I can't harbor an endangered species. I've learned that much. But, he said, leaning closer to her, if I don't jess and leash you, you're not a captive bird. Will you stay anyway? Frightful made soft noises and flew to the barren weasel rock. The plumping mill stick slipped and fell to the ground. It hit with a force that scared Frightful. She flew to the lowest limb of the hemlock. Sam sat still. I missed you, he said. She lifted her feathers and softened her eyes. His words held the sounds she recognized as human love and affection. He chatted on. I'm pretty good at getting squirrels now, Frightful, he said. I had to learn to hunt them after they took you from me. I used the same kind of sling David used to kill Goliath. It's accurate and packs a wallop, but it's not like hunting with you. We were a team and we shared such good food. Tasty rabbit for you, rabbit stew for me, good pheasant liver for you, pheasant pot pie for me. Squirrels just don't quite make it. Frightful bobbed her head and listened. Sam talked on. Alice and Mrs. Strawberry eat pork. Alice bred Crystal, her pet pig, and she and Mrs. Strawberry raised the piglets. They sold several of them for lots of money. They butchered one. It's pretty good. They saved three for breeders. I go down to the farm several times a week to help Mrs. Strawberry with her crops and garden. She can't do the heavy work anymore and Alice is busy with the pigs and livestock. I like the work. I learn from the land and the sun and rain. 
Frightful bent her knees to fly, but Sam spoke on softly and rhythmically. She straightened up and listened. And Bando, Bando's making Adirondack furniture out of twisted forest saplings and limbs. They're wonderful pieces. People come from New York and far out of state to buy them. Zella's gotten so she likes their cabin. That is, after Bando and I got the water wheel generating electricity. She has an electric stove and washing machine now. And footfalls in the woods alerted Frightful to danger, and she flew for the sky. Seconds later, Alice came running up the path. Alice, Sam shouted, stay where you are. Why? Frightful's here. You scared her. He circled the big hemlock, looking up among the limbs for his friend of the mountain. How do you know it's frightful? She asked. Cree, 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 creet, frightful called from overhead. Oh, Sam, Alice sucked in her breath and stared up at the hemlock. It is frightful, she called your name. Frightful flashed her wings and flew over the trees. Sam whistled the three notes, come to me, and ran to the bare rocks at the top of the mountain. He searched for her. She was beyond his sight, cruising above the west branch of the Delaware, looking for rats. She glided past the library and came to rest on top of a handsome iron bridge. It was a bowstring truss, 70 feet high. On each side of the span were iron bows. They were braced in place by a horizontal girder to which iron columns and webs were riveted. The ends of the bows were embedded in cement pilings. From the top of the downstream bow, Frightful saw the pigeons of Delhi. They wheeled up into the sky, broke apart, came together, and disappeared among the houses. Frightful did not chase them. She had found the mountain, she had found the tree, and she had found Sam. But a plumping mill was not a good perch. The bridge top was excellent. She dropped from the upper bow to the wide horizontal girder. She walked the girder until she came to a plate that joined the girder to the webbing. It was flat and roofed by the bow. She walked under it and looked out on the river and the valley. She liked this spot. Frightful rested and pulled a foot into her breast feathers. The sun dropped low. Below her, red-winged blackbirds clinked goodnight songs as they retired among the tall rushes. The cars that drove over the bridge trembled as if they were wind in the trees. Some deep prairie instinct told her this was where she belonged. Not in the forest, not in a muse. She preened her feathers and watched the sunset. Night came. Okay, I'll finish the rest of this chapter in a little bit. Adeline just woke up. See you all later.